today on Santa Monica Update. Coming up, we'll show you what some people are doing to strike out homelessness. Ever wanted to know what goes on inside a real crime lab? Well, we've got access to Santa Monica Police Department's forensic lab, and I'm going to take you inside next. We'll have these reports and more news from the city of Santa Monica coming up. I'm Gail Choice. Santa Monica Update. Your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Welcome to Santa Monica Update. The City Council has had a first reading and passed a new behavior enforcement tool for the city's public libraries. Our city libraries are a wonderful resource for more than 4,000 people per day. And of that large number of visits, Five to ten people create some degree of disorder each day in our libraries. In 2010, 278 disruptive incidents were documented as being significant. In some cases, police had to be called. Until now, the libraries could bar a disorderly person for a single day, only to have that person return on another day and repeat the offensive behavior. Some of these people have had their borrowing or internet use privileges suspended, but only for a month. If the city council passes this new law on second reading, the city's libraries will be able to suspend the library visitation privileges of a disruptive person for up to a year. Public libraries in San Francisco, Oakland, and Berkeley have used this solution and found it to be effective at modification of disruptive behavior. The City of Santa Monica Police Department takes pride in protecting and keeping residents and tourists safe. Keeping all of us safe means that city departments must communicate and work together to investigate cases and solve crimes in an efficient and timely manner. One of those departments is the Santa Monica Crime Lab, which plays an instrumental role in breaking many cases. Yana Kay gives us an exclusive behind-the-scenes look to see how they do it. Right now I'm examining an article of clothing using an alternate light source and I'm looking for any potential non-blood body fluid stains which may be on the article and are not necessarily visible to the naked eye. However, with the use of an orange filter, uh, the stains become visible by focusing on the fluorescence that the stain is emitting. Forensic specialist Nick Manning has been with the Santa Monica Police Department's crime lab for more than five years. He says helping bring criminals to justice is what he enjoys best. My favorite part is actually being able to go to a scene where you don't know who has committed the crime and to come away with a fingerprint and be able to find out who the person was that actually did the crime. It's Manning is one of six forensic specialists whose job is to respond to a crime scene and collect any physical evidence which gets brought back to this lab to get processed. So Lisa, this is the forensic lab. Yes. Tell me about what you have in here. Uh, we have tons of equipment. We have the drying chamber which we use to dry any type of evidence that we may bring from the field. Uh, we will dry blood, urine, semen, any evidence that is liquid, we will dry um, so that we can do the actual processing and packaging. There's also a machine called a vacuum metal deposition chamber that uses gold, zinc, and high heat to develop fingerprints off an item that has been exposed to the environment from seven to 10 years. Now let's take a look at one of the ways forensic experts develop fingerprints. Now first, I have to put on this lab coat. Now this is the rules of the lab. Now, actually, I've always wanted to wear one of these. So anyway, Lisa here is going to help me out. Now, she's taken a white piece of paper, and I put my hand print on this white piece of paper. She's now going to take that, and she's going to dip it in a chemical solution. And after a few minutes of drying in a dryer, this is going to be the result. In any given year, the crime lab processes about 700 cases resulting in physical and biological evidence. Our primary goal is to assist uh, the criminal justice system in, uh, in their pursuit of justice. And in doing that, we do that with science. That being, you know, the uh, analysis, the collection of the particular evidence. Evidence that can make all the difference in a criminal case. I'm Yana Kay for Santa Monica City TV. For more information on how to get involved in your community, just go to santamonicapd.org. 
The city council has had a second reading and passed an ordinance to ban the use of flimsy plastic bags in the city. Residents and visitors will soon see the use of free plastic bags decreasing among merchants, who will also begin charging 10 cents per paper bags if a customer needs them. The city hopes everyone will get and use reusable shopping bags. The city of Santa Monica will soon be offering three spring day camps for youth aged 8 to 14. Camp Santa Monica, Rosie's Girls Spring Challenge, and the Santa Monica Sports Experience will each meet 8.30 in the morning to 5 at night on weekdays during spring break with extended care from 7 to 8.30 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. available. Sign up today. Space is limited. Generous financial assistance is also available on a sliding scale to qualifying low and moderate income families. For more information on financial assistance, call the city's youth office at 310-458-8540. You can register your child online at www.recenroll.smgov.net or go to www.crest.smgov.net. And if you want your daughter to take part in the award-winning Rosie's Girls program, go to rosiesgirls.smgov.net. For 15 years, the first Friday in February has been an important day for one of L.A. County's oldest nonprofits, working to end homelessness and hunger. Reporter Tamara Henry takes us to the annual celebration at the AMF Bayshore Lanes in Santa Monica. The AMF Bayshore Lanes on Pico Boulevard were heating up as the Santa Monica Daily Press, Police Department, Fire Department, Big Blue Bus, and many more teams were putting on their bowling shoes in an effort to strike out homelessness in our city. More than 500 bowlers from Santa Monica businesses, social service agencies, and city leaders competed in a unique and very special fundraising event, Super Bowlathon 15. Absolutely, that's a lot of fun. Oh, just seeing everyone in the community get together. It's really, it's a great way for everyone to network and just catch up. Everybody works so hard and finally get a chance just to hang loose, let your hair down. And bring new people into the, into the mix, like my baby. We donate as much as we can to help out to bring this group together. The event benefits the West Side Shelter and Hunger Coalition by raising funds to strengthen services to homeless and at-risk men, women, and families through education, advocacy, and service coordination on the entire West Side of Los Angeles. Chrysalis probably has a lot of values in line with the Bolathon being for homelessness and eradicating hunger, right? Very much so. And Crystal's mission is to help homeless and low-income individuals become self-sufficient through employment opportunities. So we help people find jobs and keep them. Honestly, if you're not here, you're missing one of the really most special and important events that you're going to go to because this is where real relationships are built in, in the bowling alley. <laughs> All right. All right, well, you big dogs get out there and show oh, them how it's done. Th this is the how competition is right here. And you can see that I really don't have much see. competition here. Would you like to borrow the ball? <laughs> oh, well, is that a three-pounder? <laughs> Last year's Perfect Game title sponsor was Capital Source Bank. Other sponsors include Hotel Irwin, JW Marriott, Santa Monica Firefighters Association, Morley Builders, Stryker Media Group, and the Claire Foundation. So you can see why the competition gets a little crazy. The dance that I do is uh, it's the mojo dance, and I feel like I can I can make the pins knock down by me doing the twist. <laughs> yeah, you're next. City TV next year. There All we right, go. City TV. You hear that? Get your team together. Start Get our team together. Start practicing. I'll be the lead. I'm. I'm. You saw my strike, right? <laughs> <laughs> Victory! Just one more reason why your organization should get down here and compete next year. Reporting for Santa Monica Update. I'm Tamara Henry. Get more information about forming a team at westsideshelter.org. Do you love meeting people? Are you a history buff? You might enjoy becoming a docent at the Annenberg Community Beach House. As a Santa Monica Conservancy docent, you will become a valuable member of the Beach House, providing the public with entertaining and historic information on Marion Davies, William Randolph Hearst, architect Julia Morgan, and the fascinating evolution of the site. 
Docent training takes place in March and April and consists of lectures and on-site training at the Beach House. For more information or to apply, contact the Santa Monica Conservancy at their website, smconservancy.org, or call 310-496-3146. If you're a tenant in the city of Santa Monica, you owe it to yourself and your family to learn about the expanded protections Measure RR gives you. Measure RR passed last November by almost two to one. It gives increased protections to renters, whether they live in rent-controlled apartments or not. Take a look at the frequently asked questions online at the Rent Control Board homepage. Find the facts about RR at smgov.net slash rent control. The Santa Monica Public Library has improved its text messaging services. It's for people who are unable to contact the librarian by phone or online, also those who prefer texting on their phones. Santa Monica Library customers can initiate an information transaction by texting the term ASK SMPL to the number 66746. Frequent users will save time by saving the number 66746 under the name Ask SMPL. All responses are provided by reference librarians at the Santa Monica Main Library. For further information, please visit the library website at smpl.org. Call the reference service at 310-434-2608 or email reference at smgov.net. The spring edition of Seascape is now available. In it, you can learn more about Santa Monica's new household hazardous pickup service, about the coming LA Marathon in March, and much more. Get it at any public library or online at smgov.net. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. I'm Gail Choice. For all of us at City TV, thanks for watching. Check it out at the Santa Monica Public Library. Visit the library to get ready for the upcoming ban on plastic bags. You can check out the Trey Chic Simply Irresistible Bags for ideas and patterns to make your own shopping bags. Or get Why Should I Recycle Garbage for the kids in the household. It has practical tips about how they can contribute to waste reduction. Or look into the Big Green Book of Recycled Crafts to surround yourself with handmade beauty and help the environment. To find these and even more titles on this topic, search the online catalog using the phrase Sustainable Santa Monica Collection. For these and other books, audiobooks, CDs, and DVDs, check out our online catalog at www.smpl.org.